저희 단체를 너무 어렵게 보실 필요는 없어요. 둥지와 날개에 불만을 가진 사람은 도시 어디에나 있고 그분들 중에서도 조금 행동력이 뛰어나신 분들이 유로지비를 찾는 것 뿐이죠. Greetings and salutations, everyone. I'm m a k e a m a c This is Let's Play Limbus Company Time Killing Time. In the last episode, we started it. We've pulled all the relevant identities from the extraction, so now we just have to save up for Ryoshu to get full grinding ability, but... Uh, let's have a look at what this uptie for Hong Lu is. This might be spoilers though, so... I guess I'll put a timestamp or something. I guess I'll start by taking a quick look around. The child leisurely strolls into a dark and stuffy basement. He has a casual look on his face, as though all was right in the world. In his mouth is a sweet lollipop, and his gait is relaxed and gentle. There was something different about this child, though. Though he wore the very same scarf the others in his organization wore, he did not share their perpetual sense of urgency. It's not a rare sight to see a Eurodivi fight a Eurodivi, but this one's a bit different. The Eurodivi A. An organization established with the spirit of bringing a new world to life. A world in which few, the few do not hoard the riches. A world of equality. But not all those who call themselves a Eurodivi share the same sentiment. Now that the Eurodivi was widespread enough to establish themselves as a real presence, even in some nests, some of their new recruits did not share that ideal. Some of them joined only because they were down on their lucks. Or because they simply dislike the way things were under the wing's reign. Such a discord often leads to internal conflict. Sometimes their opinion of the wings and the nests just don't always see eye to eye. And sometimes violence becomes the preferred conflict resolution method. But that's just the way things are in the city, isn't it? And that is where the child comes in. He has been working as a Yuru Deve detective of sorts, investigating instances of such violence. My blood splatter is all over the place. All those broken cups. That'll fetch quite the conversation. Hey, you're finally here. Yes, I am. Can I get a lowdown on what? Can I get a lowdown on we're dealing with? I think you missed a word. His colleague extends his greetings as the child bends down to traverse under several layers of tapes outlining the crime scene. Well, like always, can't say I've got a lowdown to give you. But I'm sure this mess is nothing more than one of them brawls that break out after a potent mix of too many shots of liquor and overly passionate debates. Uh, that would be the washing machine, sorry. <coughs> I've got confirmation from the witnesses and the owner too. One of them just glassed the other out of nowhere right in the forehead. Ouch. With a glass cup? Sounds painful. Yeah, ouch is right. That was probably the last straw, the moment of no return where all hopes of resolving the situation without a casualty were lost. The partner muttered bitterly before letting out a deep sigh. Lad, I can't understand how people gathered under the same banner, in the same cause, could hate one another so much. I just don't. It's easy to bring people together for something happy between, because everyone wants the same thing. But bringing angry people together for something unhappy is hard. Once you really look into it, you'll notice that not everyone wants the same thing. People all have different reasons for feeling unhappy about the wings, right? Sometimes I kind of but wonder how you can act so aloof like you're above all this. If you decided to join the Yurdve, I bet you had your own reasons too. Am I wrong? Oh, I'm just here to expand my horizons. Certainly giving me an eye for picking up clues and getting a better picture of each case. <laughs> uh, thinking about it here, he does make a pretty good Sherlock Holmes. Maybe I should try and give him a Sherlock Holmes voice. 
The colleagues simply could not understand the child, nor should he sh could he share in his casualness. But perhaps, he thought, that was precisely why the child could be trusted to resolve these cases with a fair eye and swift feet. Besides, it was more fitting for the Uridave to settle their own problems, rather than to rely on a wing or the associations. Right, what do you see? Give me something to work with here. Of course, let's reconstruct the crime scene. The child adjusted the dial on his clockwork monocle as he replied. His voice suggested that he was in high spirits. The monocle, crafted by a skilled artificer who once worked for a famous workshop, highlighted various points of interest. Adjusting the dials would play various scenes that it could help with the viewer's deductions. So it's Batman vision is what you're saying. Look, the blood splatter is all dried at different rates. This one's dried and viscous, and it's halfway permeated into the wood. The other splatter's a bit fresh though. Not sure how much that info's worth, like how the dried blood splatters doesn't ah doesn't help us much if one of them was living 80 for more 80 hour was living eight hour days and the other one six hour days. Can't tell we bled first from that. Hmm. Let's reconstruct the broken pieces of the glass. Wait, this was a light bulb, not a glass cup. Then above us must be Huh! One of the lights is missing. Hmm, this could be interesting. Let's check the register, shall we? The child sang a cheerful hum as he sauntered up to the register. The owner of this shop organises his daily earnings by collecting the receipts. I remember how he was always so proud to show off his collection of receipts whenever we came here for a meal. Looks like he's been deep in the red as of late. Replacing a precariously hanging light must have been the last thing on his mind. Wait, that means... Yep. Ah, uh, that explains the confused look on the victim's face I saw through my monocle. Ugh, so that was all over a misunderstanding? The colleague sighed and ran his hand through his hair with a bitter expression. It must have pained him to see the Eurotave's name, to which people flocked under the same cause of revolution, degrade into the public eye. It's tragic, but maybe all this was inevitable. Expecting everything to go right in a world of ever-shifting chaos is to slumber in a dream of excessive idealism. Yeah, interesting. I should probably upgrade that, but I should also probably upgrade this. So, anyhow, back into the event. Stages. Non combat. The truth behind the absurd amount of time tax levied on us was much simpler than I expected. About a week ago, a large scale unauthorized temporal leakage phenomenon was observed at the Wuthering Heights Manor which shot you up several stages in progressive time use tax bracket due to the immense amount of time leak. A temporal leakage phenomenon? It refers to a deceleration in the flow of time within a certain physical field. In your case, it wasn't even a static deceleration field. It moved all over the manor for a good while, too. We measured about four hours worth of time in the process. Oh, that was a... Uh... Oh. That was our superpower. I actually wanted to bring up at the start, I wonder if we're going to pick up any new branch of light abilities, but... Seems like maybe we shouldn't be using those for a while. What the bloody hell is she blathering about? A deceleration in the flow of time within a certain... Ah. She must be referring to the moment during which Dante granted us celerity as we were in pursuit of that man at the manor. Impossible. The manager's ability was activated for less than 30 minutes. It is most likely that your 4 hour measurement is a calculation error. Uh, no, considering the odd sensation we had experienced as we departed the manor, it is most probable that no error had occurred in their calculations. Do you recall, Dante? As we left behind the manor. A few days ago. Hmm. Ah. Mersault, is there aught wrong with thy daily routine? 
We had just returned to Mephistopheles after the incident at Wuthering Heights Manor. Most sinners were keeping to themselves, given the clear look of sorrow on Heathcliff. However, Don Quixote's ever cheerful voice, like always, constantly shattered through the silence. I have identified an anomaly. We should have been issued the morning newspaper, not the evening newspaper. This is inconsistent with the amount of time he spent at the manor. Hmm? Perchance it was an innocent mistake? As long as I have been a passenger of this bus, morning papers have always been delivered during the designated morning hours, and evening papers have always been delivered during designated evening hours. The possibility that they have made a mistake cannot be completely ruled out. However, the likelihood of that is minuscule. Oh, now that I'm looking at it, that's a sunset, not a sunrise. I couldn't tell because of the lack of colour. This cannot be! This must be the early hours of the morrow, is it not? Uh, I may have an idea as to how this inconsistency came to be. Right, the TT4 protocol. What's that? Temporal velocity synchronization device. Uh, something like that. I've seen an advert for it once. A luxury solution to all your time synchronization needs. Enjoy equally and leisurely hours together. Or something shite like that. Oh ho? Tis quite unlikely, Sir Heathcliff, to use so many complicated words in a sentence. Pray, shall someone explain it in plain language? <sighs> it is an apparatus for equalizing the velocity of time for all those affected individuals under the T. TT4 Protocol's influence. Aha! Forsooth, I thought it quite odd how someone so affluent in time was moving and speaking at the same speed as the rest of us. Hmm. Then with this information, it can be concluded that the time we have experienced within the manor was flowing at a faster rate than the world outside. That is a coherent explanation as to why the evening newspaper, instead of the morning newspaper, was issued. Good. Now that your curiosity is sated, I don't suppose anyone has any issues with tackling a new job? The LCA has sent out a new request to track down a distortion. As for more detailed information... So, activating my ability within the TT4 protocol caused... Hmm, yes it indeed. It was akin to tampering with an already accelerated flow of time. From an outsider's point of view, it would appear that the more, or more time than what was actually spent was leaked. This bloke knows what he's talking about. Also, you didn't just manipulate time on a personal scale. Like I said earlier, you reflected the flow of time within physical space. Let me remind you that it wasn't even a static field. It moved all over that manner. Honestly, this situation is completely unprecedented. Right, they used to activate it only on special occasions, like when we had plenty of guests over for a visit. Because it was so bloody pricey. So, the time tax for your inflated tax bracket, multiplied by the surtax per volume from the physical space covered by that temporal manipulation. Yeah, no wonder it all adds up to this insane number. It ain't like we knew something like this would happen. Well, anyway, you have two payment options to sell this time tax debt. Oi, options? What of it? it ain't like bags of 10 billion odd grow from a tree, in it? Option 1, cash payment. Option 2, time payment. Yeah, about that. What's that supposed to mean, anyway? Paying with time? It means, oh. The employee who was about to answer our questions with painfully observable annoyance suddenly jolted at the sound of an alarm. Understood. I just got a call that they're ready to hold the emergency meeting regarding this incident. Limit's company may send two individuals to that meeting to represent your company. Ah. No need to tick tock and fuss, Dante. Dealing with complicated matters like this meeting is one of my responsibilities. I will be joining them to discuss the possible solution to this incident, so please keep the sinners under control. Except you, Miss Forst. You're with me. Understood. Make another mess while I'm gone, and... Only Ryoshu will enjoy what comes next. Keep that in mind as you wait. Oh. 
Well, off they go, I guess. Didn't even give us the chance to ask them more questions. They're just leaving us here like this, but isn't this whole mess basically about what'll happen to us? So, this isn't anything serious, but... What's Mersault doing on the gallows? What? Mersault, what are you doing up there? I was told to stand here, so I have done so. Who told you to do that? I did, just trying to be helpful with you and your friend's little time tax problem. I thought all employees were supposed to be at the emergency meeting. Whoa, a clock with legs, how fascinating. If someone were to submit you for consideration at the upcoming expo, it might even be worth a participation trophy. You remind me of the time when some hapless soul submitted a timepiece that doubled as a compass that had a rather tragic and critical design flaw. You could tell the time or find your path, but never both at once. Tell directions or tell time, it was only one thing or the other, leaving you lost in time and stranded in the streets. That was no good, no good at all. It's no better than a clock ticked to a compass at the end of the day, is it? Um... Oh, right. TT5 protocol is operating at experimental capacity within this office space. So don't you forget! Anyone not synced with the daily standard time might find this a little disorienting, so keep that in mind. What? Now that's the look at someone who has never once heard of the TT52 protocol, eh? The TT25 protocol, as its name suggests, is an invention to address the temporal efficiency problem present in the TT4 protocol. It's doing test runs in only a few select T call offices, so if you ever do feel the urge to leave your impressions of this shiny new thing, feel free to drop down a few notes on that uh, bulletin. Wait, who wrote that three star review? Oh boy, I'll get through this, and I'll keep the running gag going. The man, who we presume to be a T-Core staff, seemed very adept at holding a one-sided conversation with a zero external input. Not that any of us would keep up with how fast he was speaking anyway. Anyways, if you're ready, let's get cracking. I'm ready. Wait, I don't know if it's really a good idea to be ready for something that looks like... The rope extended from the intimidating machine tightened around Mersault's throat. Is this what it means to pay our time tax with time? Getting hanged from the gallows? Please call it by its precise and given name, Temporal Scale Gallows. It measures the exact amount of time you owe and sucks that time right out of you. That wasn't the intentional name though, there was simply too much hubbub and hullabaloo about its excessively long name which was approximately 58 words or letters. Can someone ask him what will happen to Mersault? Is that thing going to kill Mersault? Kill him? Nonsense, she's a very gentle machine. That's simply preposterous. However... Uh, however, spoken in such a manner, Off pretends that events of greater ill fortune shall befall us. I'm not so sure as to what might happen, actually. I suppose it'll suck 10 billion yarns worth of time out of your friend. Stop being obtuse. What is that even supposed to mean? Is he going to be stuck like that for 10 billion hours or something? Huh? Well, not exactly. Let me tell you about T-Core's particularly generous system called the Ford now uh, Daily Minimum Time Guarantee Policy. How generous, hmm? Even when worse comes to worse comes to worse, every citizen is entitled the right to enjoy a full minimum of four hour days. According to Keyhole Public Welfare Council, four hours is the absolute minimum of number of hours in day to guarantee human survival. Survive being the key word here. My, my, my. Sucking 10 billion and 40 million arms worth of time from your friend was too much, I suppose. Look, it says measurement error. That rarely ever happens. Wait, you pulled the lever when you didn't even know what was going to happen? Just out of curiosity? Huh? Of course, 10 billion arm of time taxes debt is a historically unprecedented amount of debt, so I had to see what would happen. You could land in first place in the lottery and you wouldn't even come close to making 10 billion arm, and that's before taxes. I'd say you all belong in a museum of history, if I'm being honest. Besides, I haven't seen anyone with more than 150 hours in time tax debt willingly step up to the gallows before. Anyone beyond that usually chooses to run and digs themselves into a diva doubt hole. The point is I scarcely expected someone in 10 billion arm time tax to just walk up there like that. What is wrong with this guy? Awaken more salt! Prithee, surrender not to mach such machinery! Huh? Thou art unharmed? I am alright. Why, uh, why don't you get down from the gallows for now, Mersault?
Virgilius and Faust, who returned just as this incident occurred, were both glaring at us with expressions that were anything but friendly. Uh, Marisol, you screwed us over. Okay, is this one going to be combat? No, it's story, so we can keep going. Adventures of the Three Detectives. I didn't actually think those were gallows, I just thought they looked like them, but nope, they're gallows. Okay, I can clearly see that you are both accusing me of having let the sinners run wild again, but we had our reasons. We have reached an agreement. And? You explain things to them, right? Please tell me that the agreement doesn't involve us collectively dangling from that stupid gallows. A 10 billion arn is certainly an absurd amount of money, but it doesn't change the fact we're still responsible for it. We did benefit from the extra time it granted us, and its use wasn't something that was mutually agreed on before our unilateral activation. Because it was unexpected, an unexpected event, no countermeasures could be put in place either. Yeah, but we didn't exactly have a whole lot of time to debate whether I was allowed to slow down time or not. We really had to think on our feet back then. I felt a bit miffed about being treated as though I was somehow at fault for this. If you plan to sacrifice one of us to settle the debt, I request that you evaluate our worth based on individual merit. I've prepared performance evaluation sheets for each sinner precisely for one such occasion. The last pages of those evaluation sheets are extra opinions that I don't plan on leaving any of you behind to take the fall for the group. Besides, 10 billion arn isn't the kind of money you can settle with a sacrifice of an individual. But we did eventually find a reasonable compromise while you were wasting your time horsing around in front of the gallows. And that compromise is... We have been contracted to deal with a distortion. Huh. I guess we're really starting to put our names out there if they specifically sought us out to deal with this distortion. Or it's just easy enough to throw us at the problem. They have sought out other fixes and companies to deal with this issue first. We were their sixth choice after the first five failed to produce a meaningful result. Oh, gotcha. Well, the stories are starting to circulate via word of mouth. I will not deny that. So what kind of distortion are we dealing with this time? This is a request from a series of similar unresolved cases within t borders. Some call it the case of the time-killing time. Several people have already fallen victim to the perpetrator. The case of time-killing time? It is exactly what it says on the tin. A distortion is running wild, killing our time. Time is an asset here at T-Core. It is not so difficult for us to track down the occasional time robberies by tracing it. But in the case of time killing time, the killer does not leave any traces. It is simply gone, removed and untraceable. No such thing has ever happened here before. Thus the significance of this case cannot be emphasized enough. That is why we formally request that you solve this case for us. In return, we will exempt you from your time tax debt. Oh, Thus arriveth once again my time to shine! According to a book I've perused in recent days, any and all detectives working to solve cases of urban nightmare or beyond are issued this special investigator badge during the course of their employment. Tis a badge that may as well be a universal pass to all kinds of aid regarding the investiga- Detectives? Fixes! We plan to issue you those badges, yes. Woo! Much have I longed to add one such badge to my collection. Perchance thou allow us to keep the badges once this case is dealt with? Nay, I demand that I be awarded at least three badges. One for my private collection, one for display, and one for business, so that- Shut it, lass! Right, what are we waiting for? Let's crack on. Whack this distortion and get the hell out of here. I hate dealing with money problems. I value your enthusiasm, but I would also appreciate if you could allow others to finish their sentences before cutting them off and going on a long tangent of your own. The problem is, they don't want all 13 of you running amok in order to solve this case. Indeed, I can't have your entire group run wild in the streets 
and potentially waste the precious time of our residents. Also, this special investigator badge isn't something that T-Core hands out like candy. You can't give away a whole box of badges for all 13 of them. Hmm, I concur, to a degree. Lutus, who had continuously and consistently suggested that we cut down the number of sinners, was the first to welcome this offer. We should have done something like this a long time ago. What use is there in hauling around these dead weights? We will leave the useless pawns behind to wait in the bus while the elite team of high-performing individuals takes care of business. You seem rather confident that you'd be a part of that elite team of high-performing individuals, Utus. It's ridiculous to even suggest otherwise- Alright, alright, enough with your nonsense. So, how many of us are allowed to work on this case anyway? Hmm. Virgilius trailed off, clearly unhappy about this outcome. They have decided that three, no, four individuals, including the manager, is an appropriate amount of people to be allowed to partake in this investigation. Ooh boy, we're going to have only three sinners in combat. This is going to be interesting. That's not a lot. Accept it. We barely managed to get the authorization for four after much debate. Hm. Then you have wasted your breath. The tag team of the executive manager and I will be more than enough to handily complete this mission. Right, so it all comes down to my choice, huh? Three sinners. So, so many eyes are upon me. Not that I've never had them all look at me at the same time before, but the pressure is on a completely different level when it comes to making judgement calls like these. Looks like the manager is deep in thought, but pointlessly agonising over something like this is a waste of time. I'm taking volunteers first, so let's see some hands, quickly now. Forsooth I shan't hesitate before such excelling opportunity! Mm, maybe it's finally my time to shine. Boy, don't even need to ask me, alright? Let's get on with it. Hmm. Ah, nah, that wasn't... I'm not raising my hand, I'm just cleaning my glasses. This is no simple matter. I've not been with so few sinners before. Except for that one time we accidentally walked out to the outskirts through the back door, so I have to take this slow and really consider all possible angles. What a mess. <sighs> it would be too much trouble for me to list and debate all the arbitrary limitations they set. So allow me to make the choices for you this time, Dante. Well, I don't think there's too big of a gap between them when it comes to their capabilities. But they all excel in different situations. Dante, are you listening? I just said that I will be the one to choose your companions. No, I need to consider more than just their individual capabilities. Some of them work better when paired together, but it's also true that haphazardly pairing them together might end up making a team less than the sum of its parts. This is all about building team synergy. Wait, didn't Rodia say something about people born in December and August don't mesh well together and... and... The sinners who will accompany Dante to solve this case are... I have to choose someone who can support me, calmly assess the situation, and remain free from biased judgement while making smart, rational decisions on the fly. The sinners who fit that description are... Oh. Do we even have anyone like that? I still have to choose someone, though. <laughs> Damn it, I've got it! I choose Forced, Mersol, and Yisang. Grodian, Ryoshu, and Honglu. Huh? Wait, huh? Dante has selected me, Mersol, and Yisang. Haven't you been listening, Dante? I have certain things to discuss with Miss Forced regarding our upcoming journey, so she was not an option. Yisang was immediately ruled out even before the meeting adjourned, to his his due to his history of uh, developing an unauthorized invention at T Core. Mersault did not volunteer. There was no reason to volunteer. Though I may have been disallowed from joining this investigation. I am truly grateful for your appreciation, Dante. I shan't soon forget this. Wait, wait that's... Uh... Honestly, even if it, Rodian, Honglu, and Ryoshu end up completely screwing the whole thing over, it'll be worth it for putting a few holes in Utus's ego. 
Hey, Otis, you know that's not at all what I meant. I just thought that maybe we needed someone skilled and experienced like you to effectively manage the remaining sinners. Well, we're... Uh, okay. I really soured the mood, didn't I? The three of them, whom I didn't even imagine in my wildest dreams would be hanging out together, all turned to look in my direction. Oh, it's just the three of us, huh? A trio is such an eye-catching number, isn't it? Rodia, I get, but why'd the two of you volunteer? Thought it sounded F.A.H. The greater the quantity and diversity of experience, the better it is. <laughs> Don Quixote tragically drops her head to the ground, crestfallen. I have naught else to blame but my slightly lower vertical placement in this world. Indeed, that must be why Sir Virgilius has failed to catch my impassioned hand. Don Quixote sobbed, dramatically lamenting how Virgilius did not even bat an eye in her direction, despite her being the first one to raise their hand. I am pretty sure that wasn't the only reason he didn't pick her, though. Ugh, tis my final legacy I did bestow upon thee. What's all this? A book? A magnifying glass? And are these clothes? We're gonna cosplay! Tis my treasure, my collection. Prithee, be gentle with them. Oh, but why are you carrying three sets of clothing? One for my private collection, one for display, one for business. Verily, is that not obvious to thee? Records of investigation. Solutions to 13 problems by Agatha. Ah, somebody's autographed it. So who's this Agatha? Fie! How art thee yet so ignorant in the law of fixers? Once she was a grade one fixer who was so prolific, she may as well have been the face of the Seven Association. Truly no one else? That's right, Seven Association are kind of the local detective association. Most people don't know those law Don Quixote. Come with some clothes. How wilt thou call thyself an ace detective when not dressed appropriately for the occasion? Here, here, tis only right that the leading ace detective adorn her countenance with this special mustache. Yeah. I mean, there's two jokes with Ace Detective. There's the Ace Attorney joke, and then there's the... I'm Daisy comic joke. Look! Lady Agatha says in the foreword to this book that any self-respecting Ace Detective must always dress themselves in impeccable fashion. Don't think so, Dave. Just... just let it go. So, I mean, I'm sure everyone has their reasons, but... How come you didn't get picked for this, Ishmael? Didn't get picked? I never volunteered. Hey, it's not every day you get a legitimate chance to get some free paid time off without breaking company rules. I wasn't about to let that chance slip. <laughs> uh, good issue. Good job, Ishmael. Good job. I, I guess I did have some last minute regrets when I saw who Virgilius picked, but I'll just relax for a bit and jump in to help him out when needed. Well, good luck. Well, but... <laughs> Just call us the Elite Four. How's that? While the self-proclaimed Elite Four runs around t -Core, why don't we find a place to take the edge off and unwind? How oh, unfortunate. t -Core did not authorize the rest of the sinners to run abound unmonitored. You must understand we simply cannot let individuals responsible for 10 billion arns worth of time tax roam free without proper collateral. Looks like they have temporary lodgings for those who have failed to pay their time tax. Virgilius was pointing at was was clearly a jail cell. Are you certain that's the lodging guide? I they're going to I'm going to jail. Yep, there's living collaterals apparently. It'll be fun! Hey, bet you'll look you'll look fondly back at this memory when it's all said and done, okay? We'll be right back, so stay nice and put. Nice. This jail cell at least has some heat and... Uh, wait. What happens if they just leave and don't come back? We'll be seeing him again after 10 billion hours worth of time passes, I guess. What? 
Hey, wait, get back here! That's more than enough time to finish weaving on the loom! Calm down, alright, we'll be back before you even. Thou shalt return triumphantly as a glorious band of ace detectives, mark them my words! We set off on our journey after receiving the aforementioned Special Investigator Badges, leaving the chaotic screaming and hollering of the remaining sinners behind. After a while, all we could hear was the sad, intermittent clanging of metal as someone violently shook the steel bars. Alright, looks like everyone's ready then. Let's get a move on and have a little chat with the third victim. Let's see, the case records say... Ah, there it is. It's just a stone's throw away. Huh? Huh? What do you mean, huh? Look at the record. It clearly states none of the two first two victims is in a communicative state. How unfortunate. We're gonna talk to a victim? What is this, Ace Attorney? No, I mean, why are you coming along with us? I'm sorry, but we're not taking sidekick applications right now. Go away. Shoo. Incorrect. One of us will be joining your team. We were going to send an employee with you so that we can receive immediate updates regarding your investigation progress. Pull that stick out of your ass. We plan to send a class 2 staff with you, but you're... Me? Class 5. See the badge? The chatterbox of an employee replied cheerfully as he produced a twinkling badge from his clothes. Uh, apologies for failing to recognize you, sir. I scarcely expected to see a class 5 auditor all the way down here. That guy is a class 5 staff? Really? Like, class 3 staffs were refraction railway bosses. I have to wonder, class 5, is that, or is that one step below a color fixer but in a wing? That can't be, oh boy, we've got someone really... It would certainly explain why he's such a chatterbox. He's able to waste all the time he wants. Class 5 is the highest rank one could reach as a wing employee, right? Uh, yeah, I, I thought so too. Uh, hang on. Okay, so he did say class 5. Well, don't be so sure. It depends on which wing you're talking about. Who knows? Maybe there are class 12 or even class 20 employees out there. Get it? Got it? Good. Then let's get a move on. We stared in silent bafflement at the employee who had already stormed out of the building, then hurriedly followed him out the door. Maybe that's the equivalent of a CEO? Isn't it absolutely brilliant? The concept of killing time. They're not slowing down or speeding up time, they're eliminating it completely, just yanking it out of the circulation. So, uh, your name is... My? Relax and call me however you want. Names are such an important things, aren't they? No, names matter. Really? You never call anyone by their names, though. Relax, call you however we want, but you're obviously here to be our handler. Yeah, that's true. That does make things a tad awkward, doesn't it? Let me think. Ah, I've got it. You're all dressed like detectives. Why don't you consider me your heaven for helpful assistant who tags along on your adventures? Okay, but still... Ryoshu, who was staring off into the distance while puffing her cigarette, suddenly spoke up as Rodia was about to retort. Assistant, lead us. Right away, ma'am. Hmm, what's the difference between an assistant and a servant? You know, my family used to employ... They sure warmed up to him fast. Okay, we are definitely over time, sorry about that. Until next time guys, take care, I'll see you all around.